So I've watched a lot of Melee Stats movies, but I have not watched any Turn Down for Walt movies. Well, I have watched one. It was the Apex one. Turn Down for Walt makes uh, Smash content specifically Melee. And this Abate S2J video keeps showing up in my recommended, and I really wanted to watch it. In case you don't know what happens in this set, it's very funny. And I don't know the whole history, so I want to see it. Big fan of Turn Down for Walt. He's a really cool guy. Uh, I've had a chance to talk with him more, like, on a personal level at events. But now he works on Panda stuff. He made videos for BG Stats. Let's watch the curious case of Abate versus S2J. Near the end of 2015, a man by the name of Steven Abate embarked on a journey through a tournament bracket called the Big House Five. Here's a quick primer for those unfamiliar with melee tournaments. Players have coined Poor a handful Luigi, of terms bro. to describe a tournament He's only size, gonna go frequency, down. and overall weight. These range from Smash Fest to weeklies on the smaller end, to the gargantuan Super Major, which is considered one of the most prestigious tournament types in the scene. And the Big House 5 definitely fell into the Super Major category. Dude, I forgot Smash Con. These oh my scale god. Tournaments yeah, Big House is like one of the big four events. It's like this, Genesis, Apex when it was around. And it's a big deal because Midwest doesn't get any love otherwise. Competitive tournaments like these aren't like a season of sporting events. They're a lot less forgiving. But if you have a bad day at a Super Major, that's it. You don't get another shot at a about playoff duck. event. Each tournament Man. has their own set of stakes, ranging from invitation Samus slots could never to go this far. events <laughs> to prize pool money. We are truly For in the dark reason, age of Melee. Melee. Has a list of pretty familiar faces you may consistently see in a top eight. And the idea of new faces appearing in a top eight is not something that should be downplayed by any means. A group of players referred to as the five gods of Melee. Armada, oh, we're getting the Hungry whole background Bucks, Mango, here. Mewtwo King, and PPMD. Bro, I could talk about this now. The five NFTs. Which one would you pay the most for? I think I would pay a lot of- Oh, dude, no, the mango one. That's only gonna go up in value, right? Now, I'm about to drop this on you. Okay, I've said this on stream before, but it's a new audience, whatever. You can chastise me if I'm wrong, because I didn't know Melee like that back then. Was PPMD really a god? Apex 2014. That's what everybody fucking says! That's one tournament! Oh, he won 14 and 15. Okay, well, that's a little bit better. But two events?! He could beat the other four, therefore he was a god. Well, c I guess, but not, ri like, Leffen did that, and Leffen was very clearly stated, it's not that he's a god, he's something else. He's a demigod, or whatever the fuck, like Plup and Axe, the demigods. Melee's so fucking corny. Because look at these guys, dude. Armada, Hungrybox, and Mango all had times at the top for, like, an extended period of time. Mewtwo King, I don't know if he ever... If he had that, it was like old days. It was olden times, right? Did PPMD have that same thing? Did a brawl player call Melee corny? Yeah, he fucking did. Because I have a chip on my shoulder because of how you Melee fucks treated us during brawl. And it's never going to go away. We can play nice and be all buddy-buddy now. But I remember what you shithead said to me. And I'm not going to forget it. We're all playing buddy-buddy now. Because there's money involved. I'm kidding. Everybody that's in the scene now is big cool. Aside from the massive scale of this event, four of the five gods were present. And wouldn't you get- Hmm, look who wasn't present. Hmm, some god. <laughs> some god he was. So yeah, a bait getting seventh place at a Super Smash Bros. tournament may not seem like all that much. Oh, uh, a bait also plays Luigi, which I guess is important also. Luigi, <laughs> Luigi. is often considered to be profoundly Omega laugh. average. He's very much a mid-tier, meaning his usage is fairly low across Melee's player base, and of the people that do choose Luigi as a main, the character tends to struggle in ways that the stronger side of the cast may not. Yeah, but in he Melee, do slide. Playing a low or mid-tier character. He do go like slide. What is this FD? Stat. How big is this FD? It Wait is. a minute. I have been a long time since I've seen Melee, but I don't think it's like this. These people go into matches with the preconceived notion that I use character X who is better and has these tools to deal with Luigi, but those people are limiting themselves and get stuck doing textbook stuff. This is especially true of Melee, right? Because, like, Melee has just do X and you'll win. Melee is a flowchart game. Uh, to a point, because it's about how much you put in to transcending and ascending beyond low-level play, you know? Ironically enough, Abate admits to his main coming Goofy to fruition character. from trolling. So it kind of started as just like a troll character, just to um, poke fun at uh, my friend. Just a couple <laughs> years prior to the Big House 5, Abate also made history by becoming the first Luigi main in the world to top 8 a tournament, with a 7th place finish at Zenith 2013. I watched this tournament, oh my god. 
That was really almost 10 years ago. Oh my god. Bro, that's TakeOver. I think this is TakeOver. This is my boy, Alan. TakeOver was a snake player from Brawl who I was really cool and good friends with. He actually migrated over to uh, Melee. He's cool as shit. And that's JonTron. Speaking of JonTron. So back in uh, 2013, 2014, whatever, when Brawl like had no viewership and you know there were no celebrities or anything like that, we got word that we were going to have somebody big show up at our tournament. Somebody huge, a YouTube star. And JonTron shows up to play Falco. And everybody is losing their shit. They can't believe that JonTron is playing Super Smash Brothers. You guys don't understand how big of a deal this was. This also happened with Cole and Dylan Sprouse. Like the kids from Big Daddy. It was crazy. Everybody was like, yo, they're at, they play video games? But JonTron shows up playing right, Falco. Okay, What's crazy is that JonTron plays Falco. And look at this shit. So, I mean, totally fair. Let's go! He knew how to chain grab! He knew oh, how to chain grab! You out. guys, Let's this see. would be like Timothy Chalamet showing up to a tournament today and, I don't know, doing Falco's up throw, up air, up air, up air. Like, this is a big deal. This is a huge celebrity showing up and being good as shit. Coney, we are young. Yeah, that's why I said Timothy Chalamet. That's like one of your people. I didn't know who this fucking was. This is one of your stars currently in mass media. If you don't know who this is and you're under a certain age, you're out of touch. Stop reading anime. What does he do? I don't fucking know. I don't know who this is. You were supposed to. If I had to say a celebrity from my age, I would have said Will Smith. <laughs> I was trying to relate to you, you fucking geeks. The coolest underdog stories in Melee's history. All riding on the coattails of a freak in-game accident What is this? Johnny S2J Kim. In 2015, Johnny S2J Kim was the best Captain Falcon main in the world, but he had a major weakness in his edge guarding. In his early career, S2J <laughs> became notorious for less than optimal decisions by the ledge, <laughs> often resulting in dropped conversions or self-destructs. I don't know why this is so funny. The, the fact that you're describing the fact that S2J can't edge guard in a very academic, professional way. I'm trying to think of, like, another example of this, like an ultimate version. I can't really think of a way to, to convert this or contextualize this. Cosmos can't close? Yeah, maybe. It would be like saying that Cosmos had a very difficult problem where he was never able to end sets in an efficient fashion, often causing him to lose out on games that he would have otherwise won. Yeah, he's a fucking choker. Say he chokes. It's like this very long, drawn-out, academic way to say this guy is really bad at this. By the way, I think Cosmos' uh, reputation as a choker isn't fully earned, personally. I think he's pretty. He can be pretty clutch, but I do think he's the least clutch of the good players, except for maybe Tweak. The only other time Abate had faced off against S2J was just a month prior to the Big House 5 at Mayhem September 2015. Luigi is where so S2J weird. would win two games to one. In this set, we'd see a theme of S2J utilizing Stomp in a number of his edge guards, which, as we'll soon find out, would come to haunt him at this tournament. Like a head-on collision, Abate and S2J would spend most of this game and set constantly running into each other. <laughs> the two trade hits for the first this 30 game seconds fast of the as match, Abate with some wave dash and up smashes, and S2J boom, with boom. some nares and up airs. Abate has hit S2J 10 times, <laughs> mostly from traded hits or combo breaks. Just to neutral leave S2J air. Yeah. At 94%. I hate that Luigi is the luigi is like the harbinger of chaos and weird shit luigi just can't be normal one move andy kind of trickster god no that's too charitable trickster god means that like he means to do it like oh my machinations are yet to be revealed luigi's just like a fucking weirdo but he's been like this since melee so i feel like it has to be a design decision to treat him and design him in this way but the dude is sliding all over the place and in brawl he was a a weird dude, and then in Smash 4, he became the weirdest. Abate piles on over 60%, knocks S2J off stage, and wins game one with a down tilt into down air. The set count is 1 to 0 Ooh. in favor of Abate. With game two on the horizon, S2J does something a bit unorthodox. What does he do? Mission webs, the commentators for this set, are left equally as confused. Oh my god, S2J's going his What? Oh my. He's going Falco. I didn't know he went Falco. I haven't seen this set. I've only no, seen the, the moment. It's a good the last time S2J switched to Falco in tournament was just a month prior, 
versus Beach in a pool set at Body City 3. I've never seen and him play Falco. And the only other tournament bro. recording I found of S2J's Falco prior to the Big House 5 was a set versus Dr. PP's Captain Falcon <laughs> at Genesis 2. By the way, this is a terrific Dr. clip. Dr. PP's Captain Falcon at Genesis 2. This clip rules. And just showing him just illusioning off stage. He didn't have to bring anything to it. He didn't have to say anything about it. He didn't say, oh yeah, the Falco left something to be desired. He just showed him SDing. This is excellent uh, cinematography. This is show, don't tell. Some Scorsese no surprise, stuff, bro. Abate takes game two over S2J's secondary Amazing. Falco. And he's now up secondary Falcos do that every S2J. game. Now on the verge of a reverse 3-0, Abate would need a miracle. And to everyone's surprise, he found one. At 647, Abate opens up S2J's second stock for an extended what combo. What the fuck is Luigi doing? What the fuck is he doing? Why is Luigi magic? This is so stupid. Slide up smash. Slide up smash. Slide down smash. What the fuck is he doing? How did he do that? Slippery SDJ ass cringe would respawn lord. back with another stock on a bait, again just a short period after respawning, leaving both players with two stocks remaining. At 542, a bait gets an opening which surely looks like it will convert into a stock. Also, I don't know why you guys I don't know why nobody calls out Luigi players for doing this. They always every SDJ time they get a stock, they go for this down B. And, and it's so cringe. I don't know why they're all going for the same taunt. Like all of them go for the taunt like, "Oh yeah, I'm so strong with the down B." It's so embarrassing, dude. And they all do it. All right, let me just take a look. What did the net catch today? There's one, two. That guy didn't fall for it. That guy did. That guy did. That guy didn't. A lot of dumb people in chat tonight. A lot of dumb, stupid idiots. I've been playing Smash for like 15 years. You think I didn't know that? S2J would respond back with you're another stock on a bait. You're all Again, dumb. just a short period. I'm dumb, sad face. As long as you know, stocks I'm here to help. There All he goes he again, bro. It's so cringe. And S2J is dead. But he does nothing. And S2J makes it back. What? Maybe a down okay. air. Oh, that was not the best DI. What are you Whoa. doing, Abate? Abate. Abate. Wait, Abate. what? He had nothing. This is, this is not the time. Oh, my God. Wait, why did he just yeah, let him come problem. back? What is this? Maybe a down air. He does oh, down air, and then the he just... DI. What are you Whoa. doing, Abate? Abate. <laughs> he just holds center? What did he try to do? Miss wave dash? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, right? He tried to, like, dash back. Would he have gone far enough? Felt sorry for taunting. <laughs> that's what it was. He taunted. He was like, I shouldn't do that. I should... Oh, I feel bad. Never mind. I'm gonna let him come back. It's the least I could do. Fortunately, the flub only cost Abate some percent and time on the clock, as he's able to pick up the stock about 15 seconds later. With a wave dash tilt. Bro, this is why I love edge guarding. It sucks that we're never gonna have moments like this in Smash games again, because we're always going to have the trumping thing. Like, this game of chicken, where you have to decide, is he going on stage, or is he going for ledge? Because he could have made it on stage, and obviously he could have just, this is a 50-50, right? He could have just forward aired him, uh, but he would have had another shot to recover. I don't miss this at all. Okay, if you guys are, this isn't going to work. I was going to say, if you are from the old games, and you prefer the new way, can you, like, type 1 in chat? Because I'm curious. But you're not going to... Everybody's going to type 1. Everybody's going to type 1. I love uh, ledge guarding. Ledge guarding? Edge guard? Whatever. I love grabbing the ledge. I'm 30, starting in melee. I prefer ultimate system. Really? I hate the new system, dude. You know what it might be? I think it might be because all the recoveries in ultimate just make it back anyway. So the game just becomes ledge trapping. I miss edge guarding. Somehow it existed in Smash 4. No, it did not. It was worse in Smash 4 than it is now. In Smash 4, it was literally every character just slowly drifts under and then goes up. It was every character goes down and then immediately back up. Edge hogging is literally, I grabbed the ledge before you. Yeah! Shake my hand. And that's based. You don't even need the ledge. That's why it's based. You're literally on stage and I'm just like, I need this. You're not giving him anything. I think it's cringe to give the other guy the stage. Oh, I know that you need this in order to survive, so here you go. That's so embarrassing. It takes no skill. Okay, if you think edge hogging takes no skill, then you are not playing the game correctly. I don't you're doing something wrong. But a bait gets a misfire, which allows him to tackle <gasps> Magic. A small 7% before going down. Oh, okay. so oh he go. only got seven percent. Oh, he needed that misfire. He needed that was huge. That God's was favorite time. Luigi. <laughs> Luigi's funny when he if gets hit in this game. If there's one aspect of gaming Oof. that has the ability to tilt players into the shadow <laughs> realm, 
it's RNG. A bait is a player who can seemingly hit this 1 in 8 probability whenever oh the hell he boy. wants. Like 17? Oh, like I really hope Connor takes it. I hope he. Doge! Oh, no! Okay, listen. I'm gonna peel back the curtain, okay? I'm gonna ruin the magic. The Easter Bunny isn't real, and a bait has gone for this a million times, and if he doesn't get the misfire, you don't see the clip. That's all it is. If he doesn't get the misfire, you never hear about this. So it's not that he summons misfires whenever he wants. It just means that he got it this one time, and you get to see it. No, I know. I'm sorry. I have to tell you that. Copium? <laughs> a bait is magic? You know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Misfire combos are a level of jank that can mentally destroy even the calmest of players. And the general population of Luigi players seem to have the most fortunate <laughs> timing when it comes to landing them. And the general po- This is- I fucking hate Luigi, bro. What are you doing? You're just sitting on top of the rock? Population of Luigi- <laughs> The thing about this game 5, though, was that everyone was expecting some type of misfire jank because RNG just seems to favor a bait that much. But he got something so much more interesting. Magical. A bait gets a down smash on shield. Oh, we're recreating this. To jump out of shield and land a knee. Uh huh. This sends a bait at a sharp angle. Downwards. Oh, he went low. A bait, now hoping for luck to be in his favor, looks for a misfire. He doesn't get it. In fact, his missile leaves him pretty far from the ledge, and he's one edge guard away from losing the set. But S2J, in true S2J fashion, <laughs> takes matters into his own hands and goes for an offstage stomp. He Boom! Hits, but a bait doesn't move. <laughs> the two players fall together with no chance at returning to stage, and with one last desperate recovery, oh, S2J hits no. the blast zone first. In a sea of palpable confusion, the set is over. A bait wins, three to two. This is some fact or fiction shit. A bait doesn't even react. He's so like in the moment, first. right? You're in so focused on your character, you don't even over. notice. A bait wins, three to two. And then you realize. Was there actual in, actually an invisible ceiling? Let's find out. But if you think that's the last we hear of this set, you're mistaken. I did, The internet actually. would I soon become that. flooded with smash boards and Reddit threads ranging from very justified expletives to <laughs> crowd reaction videos to theories on what exactly happened. I, I still don't know. Oh, I know what the is. story is supposed to be, intimate. but... I know about the, the invisible ceiling, but I don't know what it is. The S2J was called an invisible ceiling glitch. This glitch is also referred to as Y knockback velocity canceling, which <laughs> seems like a much more fitting name for the visuals paired to this clip. It all starts with a bait hitting S2J yeah, but that's nerd shield shit. with down smash. There is the a ceiling above me. when S2J uses knee out of shield to counter a bait's attack, and we can see the hit send Luigi into the invisible ceiling, which causes him to move back <gasps> down. But because oh. a bait initially hit the left side of S2J's shield, the glitch occurs infinitely until the attacker hits the ground or grabs the ledge. Wait. When the glitch occurs... So that's why he went at that angle? I thought he just di bed. Oh, when that's stomp wild. Hits, he does not take any vertical knockback, and a bait is able to survive for just long enough to win the game. Oh. When everything was on the he line, falls too fast? decided yeah. to give a bait one last push. <laughs> and it worked. Little S2J ended up making a commendable run after falling to a bait, taking out Chillin' Dude and Intend Dude before losing to SFAT, ultimately placing ninth. A bait would be sent to losers in his following set versus Mango. He'd then eliminate Duck with an impressive three game to one win to qualify for top eight before falling to Shroom for seventh place. I miss Shroom. The two would later play in a salty sweet set just a few months later at Genesis 3, which S2J would win four to two. Honestly, the Genesis 3 venue is one of my favorite visuals. Because I feel like a lot of events don't have this sort of feel to them. You know what I mean? This room looks packed. And a lot of other tournaments have crowds like this, but it's not framed this way. This is framed so well. Genesis 8 is the same one. Wait, really? We're back in this venue? Oh, shit. Mm. Sick. I'm excited. A bait versus S2J at the Big House 5 was a set that breathes emotion. That shit looks and like Squid is Games. One I That's still what I'm saying. To this day with the same amount of shock as the first time I ever watched it. And God. yet it's oddly anticlimactic. An emotional roller coaster of if a set. If he drifted into the up B, if he grabbed him with up B. End. Well, I guess a bait would have would later mark a bait versus S2J at the Big House 5 as 2015 set of the year. I guess. And I think that it's a well deserved title. Sure. Did the glitch actually matter? Well, Maybe not, but hindsight is twenty twenty. 
Does a bait even still play? Good at unraveling the mystery surrounding their game. And while a plausible explanation for the glitch was eventually reached, I'd like to think that this particular tournament encounter will remain a strange and... I want you guys to realize that I literally can't ask a single question in chat ever because this happens. These are the first three I saw. No, yeah, sometimes. Every fucking time I ask any question, it's those three in order. It's not like, no, 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 or yes, 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 so I can get a, a consensus. I don't know what truth is. I but need experts as as only in my chat. Continue to experience the strange and seemingly inexplicable, the curious case of a bait versus S2J. Will the order no is how long they take long. to type. That's a good point, actually. Good movie, bro. Good movie. Again, uh, this is from Turn Down for Walt. He makes great stuff on Smash, mostly melee, but he also does stuff on PG stats. If you guys were a fan of it, please subscribe to the guy. Uh, he he puts out some amazing stuff, including this. It's a good movie, dude. He's on your team. True. Full disclosure, he is on Panda. <laughs> shilling. Hey, you could call it shilling, or you could say that I'm giving proper credit because I know a lot of reactioners that have not done that recently.